The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Three Brain Cells and the host of Between Taramina and Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on Oriented Television. Got a lot to talk about this week, especially in the basketball docket. Um, when you look at storylines, of course, um, West Bloomfield, I got some serious concerns with them. Um, I mean, like, um, obviously, um, with girls basketball, um, boys basketball, obviously, um, I'm going to break down the North Farmington loss to, um, Warren Lincoln. We're going to break those down. Um, obviously, um, obviously when you look at that game, um, obviously when you look at that game, obviously, um, just a lot to really look at. Um, it's just, you know, a lot of mind boggling things. Um, you know, when you really look at it, um, it's hard to explain really, um, what happened here. Um, and I apologize for the, um, video part of things early on. Of course, um, you know, we, you know, we started a little early, so, you know, but so I do apologize. So, we're gonna break up. We're gonna break the. We're gonna also. So we're gonna break those down. Obviously, the um, West Bloomfield girls basketball team. Um, their interesting um, dilemma a little bit. They're two and two in their last four games. And also, want to talk about Farmington. Um, obviously, when you look at the season that both teams were coming into the year. Um, so when you look at, we're gonna go girls basketball first, and I think this is something we got to talk about. Um, when you really look at. Girls basketball. I mean, obviously, you know your top teams. You know, of course, you know, when you look at the OA, obviously West Bloomfield, you got Rochester, Lake Orion, Clarkston, Stony Creek, um, Oxford, North Farmington, the white, Bloomfield Hills, and the blue. Um, it, you clearly know who your dominant teams are. I mean, you clearly do. Um, when they have to play each other, you know, it, it makes it harder. Um, obviously, you know, you look at Rochester and Lake Orion, but playing an extra league game, um, because they had that game at Little Caesars Arena on Sunday. Um, heck of a game though, between the Falcons and the Dragons. Um, it could have went either way. I really felt like Orion gave that game away. Um, so now Lake Orion sits at five and one. Um, they got Troy coming up. Um, I'm not pressing the panic button on the Dragons. I wouldn't, I think they're fine. They got some injuries, obviously, Izzy Wachinski's injury. Um, and Kylie Hex injury, both of them are really huge right now. But, I, but you know, Coach Bob Bridges, he will expect those two girls to be back some part during the season, especially at the break. Um, and then on the flip side with Rochester, obviously, you know, Alice Mack has been playing really well. Kylie Robson's been struggling a little bit, and I don't know why she's struggling a little bit. Um, but the play of Natalie Race, you know, she's been clutch at times. Um, and then, you know, Abby Pleasant's had some moments where she's looked good, um, for coach Bill Thurston and Rochester looks to be like a team that has really rebounded since their opening night loss to farm sales mercy. Um, and right now they're looking really good heading into the break. Um, I think they got a lot of competence. Um, so we'll see, we will see what happens with them. Um, on the flip side, uh, and then of course you look at, um, you know, Groves, Groves had a rough week, obviously. Um, you know, they played Heartland, they played West Bloomfield, both teams were in the state, um, finals, um, last season in division one. Um, and you know, that game could have went, you know what I mean? Like the game against Heartland really, I felt Groves had a good chance to win that one. Um, and then West Bluefield, we know what happened there. Um, I'm going to talk West Bluefield in a minute here. Um, Soft Arts and Tech, you know, you don't know what you can get from them. You're going to get good A&T or bad a and um, They had no issues scoring, and that's a good thing for them. That is a real good thing. for them. But when they play against um, teams that are just, you know, right there with them, a and going to have some issues. I mean, it's clearly there. Um. So when you look at a and I, I, their issues are pretty self-explanatory. Um, Stony Creek, I'm still trying to figure this team out. 
because they're coming off a really tough loss to, um, you know, North Farmington early in the week. Um, then they bounce back, knock off a and um, It's kind of hard for me to figure them out. Um, obviously, the play of Sarah the Prairie, Mia Carson. Um, the, the fourth quarter was the difference in that game. It really was um, in that North Farmington game. Obviously, Sal Leftwood had a nice game. Penelope Corey had a nice game. Eliza Muller finally figured, um, finally starting to become that third score that Coach Jeff Simpson needs. Um, we're going to talk the Raiders in a minute. But when I look at West Bloomfield, and I think this is the team we really got to discuss, is obviously when you look at playing showcase games, I'm not a, I mean, like, I'm not a big fan of showcase games for a couple reasons. One, you're, you're on somebody else's schedule. You know, you're playing games basically like at 1250 or like two o'clock. You know, you're, you're not, you're not in routine. And normally when you look at teams that are used to playing showcase games, I mean, West Bloomfield's one of them. Um, obviously you look at, of course, you know, you look at the AU docket, obviously with the Michigan Storm AU program, of course, with, um, with both Davis sisters, then you have both Hendricks sisters, you have. You know, obviously, you know, with that AAU connection, you know, so if you're kind of like them, you're kind of used to that routine, but there are some teams that I know that are really not a fan of it. And I personally, you know, I, I'm a guy who always believes that besides your varsity team, you have to always have your sub varsity teams because there's going to be times where you're going to need your sub varsities to be there for you, you know? I mean, you know, when you really look at it, you know, program strength is always important. It always has been and always will be. Um, but with West Bloomfield, um, you know, I look at R. Simone on Twitter. Um, <laughs> when I look at, um, you know, I know she writes a lot about, about players, about individual players and teams. Um, I'm kind of really disappointed with her that she really hasn't looked at players from like Lake Orion or Oxford. Um, I know that, um, and I'm not, I'm not sounding mean or anything here, but I'm just going to tell her being honest with you. I mean, like, please, seriously, you know, look at some players, you know what I mean? Like for your site, I, I get it. You know, I know you're again, a, you said, I get it, but I'm saying just look at some players. You know what I mean? Like there's some other schools in the area who are very good. Who's got some very good players. I mean, like, obviously for me, I've always believed in, you know, the colleges are going to come looking at you. Players don't have to come to the colleges. That's how I look at things. And, you know, but West Bloomfield's case, yes, with them, obviously you have the Davis sisters, you have the Hendrick sisters, and they're getting a lot of attention. Obviously the Davis sisters committed to Michigan state. Um, but when you look at West Bloomfield, um, really, um, with them, I think that the Lakers, um, I don't know if they've underestimated their two opponents, albeit they've been playing really good teams. Um, they've been playing some, you know, I mean like South Bend, Washington, Indiana, they're the number one team in the state in, um, in Indiana. I mean, they're the number one team in the state for a reason. I mean, they're a solid team. And then when they played against Arbor Prep, they played Arbor Prep on Saturday um, at Detroit Renaissance in the um, Lady Phoenix shootout. Um, they were up 22-9 to nine at the end of the first quarter. I mean, how do you describe that? And now all of a sudden, now you're in a game. Um, and, you know, that was a game where I don't think West Boomer should have lost. They ended up losing that one 6-6-6-2. Um, if they ever prep, and I get all the things. I know the Ubali twins and the um Davis sisters. I mean, like and the Davis twins, obviously, they're connected. Yes, they play on the same AU team. But here's the thing, you know, sometimes when you look at a team like West Bloomfield, who gets a lot of star players, a lot of attention because of the because of the Davis sisters and the Hendrick sisters. Here's the thing, I mean, like. You're going to get all that attention and all that, but here comes the thing. where Your weaknesses are clearly there. Look at West Bloomfield. They're not a deep team. They are not a deep team. 
And the yes, they sit right now at three and two. Yes, you know they're one of the top teams to say. I get it. Yes, they're the defending Division One state champions. But if you're Coach Jerry McAllister, you got to develop that bench. You have to. Because what happens if the Davis sisters get in foul trouble? What happens if the Hendrick sisters get in foul trouble? You know, do you have a plan B, plan C? I mean, you look at the two losses, obviously, yes, Summer Davis can score 30 points. Yes, Indy Davis can also score around 30 points. Yes, I mean, Kendall Hendricks can score over 30, yes, and also Sydney Hendricks can score over 30. Yes, but where's everybody else? You need a plan besides those four, you know, if you're going to have another deep postseason run. That's how I look at West Bloomfield. You have to develop your bench. Your bench is your Achilles heel in the postseason. That's clearly what it is. You look at teams like, you know, in the, in the red. You look at Lake Orion. Lake Orion's got a deep bench. You look at Rochester. They got a deep bench. You look at Oxford in the white. They got a, they got, their bench is improving. North Farmington, bench is improving. I mean, you got to look at with West Bloomfield, obviously. You got to have games where you play against teams that are, you got to have games where you're playing against teams that are basically, you know what I mean, are like, Maybe not as strong as you are. Just develop your bench. You know, so that's what I'm saying about with West Bloomfield. That's what I'm saying about with these showcase games. You know, you need to develop your bench. You know, you need to. Because there comes a time in the postseason, if you don't have a bench, you're in deep trouble. That's how it is with West Bloomfield. You know, and here's the thing. I would ask every single journalist, every single sports journalist this, this question. Focus on the team and not individuals. That's what I would say to them. I mean, I get it. You know, I get it that, you know, yes, you got some good individual players. You got some great, talented individual players. Yes. But, you, but it comes to words team first. It has to be team first. You know, that's, what, that's the reason for the success. The individual, you know, you look at players like, you know, who get recruited. Obviously, you know, they have to be team first guys. They have to be. It's not me over we. It's, it's not me over we. It's we over, it's we over me. Team comes first. That's what I would tell every journalist right now. Every single journalist. You know, you see players talking about the team. The team, the team, the team. It all matters. <sighs> That's my rant right now. That was my rant. I mean, you know, seeing these sites, obviously, you know, you look at, you see these sites, obviously, you know, they say, okay, the individual player, individual player, you know, but you got to go team. Team, team, team. All matters. I mean, that's my opinion. That's my take. Um, but back to West Bloomfield. Um, as I mentioned, yes, for West Bloomfield, they've got to develop their bench. That's obvious. Um, there's a reason why they're 3-2. and two. I'll be play good competition. But at the end of the day here, it comes down to developing your bench. That is my take on West Bloomfield. Um, when I look at the red right now, I still think West Bloomfield is the team to beat. Rochester and Lake Orion are right now even. Clarkston's a much different team about Ellie Roback. Um, obviously, it's showing that Lake Orion game um, where, um, you know, they really missed their scoring down the stretch. Um, Stony Creek, you know, they just had a rough game against North Farmington. Um, give them a pass there. Um, Groves obviously played the two um, Division One state finalists. Um, and then Southfield, we don't know what to expect from them. I mean, they've been really good offensively. Um, you know, so that's my take on, that's my take. Obviously, you know, when you look at, when you look at it here, of course, um, seeing some of these games, obviously, you know, yes, they're on Twitter. Yes. I mean, like you're seeing all the, seeing all the, you know, Division One accolades, obviously, with these sites, obviously. Um, I mean, 
you know, you gotta you gotta look at it from a team perspective instead of an individual perspective. And that's what I'm telling. That's what I'm telling these other people in the media, like around Twitter. Um, just focus on the team and not on the individual. I mean, that's how I view it. Um, uh, let's go to the white now. Um, when you look at the white, obviously the division comes it obviously people look at Oxford and North Farmington, but Royal Oak is a team that I think people need to start paying attention to. And I think the reason why I say this is because Royal Oak has been rolling quietly. And they've been playing some really good basketball. I mean, they had a nice one against Harper Woods. Um, they have been quietly rolling. They got a star player in the making in Lydia in um in um Lydia Dinkins. They got a they got Lucy Furtag. I'm really high on her. There's some others I'm really high on with this team. I really love what Coach Brian Spot has. I mean, they are winning games. They're going back to their defense first mantra. That's really where I'm seeing it. And that is a good sign if you're Coach Brian Zapata. That is a really, really good sign. Um, bottom line is, when you really look at it here, um, this team really has, um, you know, Royal Oak really has a, um, you know, they're, they're team first team. I mean, they've been playing good basketball. I mean, nobody's been getting a lot of the attention. I mean, they're playing really good team basketball. I really like that. And obviously, when you look at a team like, um, you know, when you look at North Farmington, obviously they got some very good proven star players in Sal Leffler and um, Penelope Curry, but they're finally, you know, they finally found that third score. Could it be Eliza Muller? She's been playing good the last two games. I mean, she's been playing really good. I mean, Stony Creek and then the game against Troy Athens, she's been playing really good. Um, And that's why for North Farmington, 6-0 start. I mean, like, you look at what the Raiders have been doing. I mean, like, the Raiders have been playing just good basketball, really good basketball. But the schedule, you know, I, I wasn't so on the schedule until they beat Stony Creek. Um, and that's a big deal when you beat a team like that because Stony Creek is a very, very good team. I really love what Coach Kellen James has done with that team. Um, but when you look at North Farmington right now, I think for them, you know, the, the team that they have to beat is Oxford. And I think when you look at the Wildcats right now, Ever since that Lake Orion loss, Oxford's been really playing good basketball. Um, that Birmingham Marion win still looks good on paper, but I, I just don't know what Birmingham Marion this year. I mean, like, I'm not sold on this team right now. They're struggling. You know, they're struggling right now. I mean, yes, they're playing good teams, but still. I mean, it's not a um a good recipe with the way that Birmingham Marion's playing right now. I mean, it kind of gets me thinking maybe – Maybe I might have overrated Birmingham Marion. You know, I mean, when you look at the district projections, maybe. I mean, because when I looked at that district, obviously you have Groves there, you have Seaholm there. Um, I think Groves is a serious player now in that district. I really do. Um, and then you look at obviously the um, and when you look at obviously Oxford, the way that they're playing, they're playing really good basketball, especially playing the Vale Wood. Um, Allison Hubster's been playing good basketball. Sophia Ross been consistent. Miranda Winamco's been playing good basketball. Peyton Richter's been been out, been slowly coming back to full strength, which is a good sign for them. It really is. Um, so if you're when you look at the white right now, I mean, yeah, people are gonna say, well, what about Harper Woods? What about Seaholm? Seaholm's hard for me to trust right now with the way that their schedule is. Um, they had some tough losses. Um. And then, um, but I'm curious to see what happens with Seaholm going forward. Really am. Um, Harper Woods, yes, they got that win against St. Clair Shore Salt Lake. 918 points from Sierra Peterson. Um, but that tough loss to Royal Oak. Um, and then there's good, and then there's Berkeley. I mean, like, and then, you know, when you look at Berkeley, obviously with them, the problems that what I saw with Berkeley against A and T was absolutely rough to watch. The fact that they lost by 22 on their home floor, that's not a good recipe. That's not good at all. That's a problem when you look at with A&T. That is a serious, serious problem. And that's not a good omen of things for Berkeley. Really is not. Um, 
but they did bounce back against Adams. Now, albeit Adams is very young this year, you know, Adams really has not been the same team since that Lapeer game. Um, but they're a young team. I mean, so I'm going to give Adams some slack here. I'm really going to give the Highlanders some slack. Um, and we're going to go from that. I mean, like, obviously I would give the Highlanders some slack this year. Yes, they lost a lot of pieces last year. They lost, I mean, they lost two very good players last year. I mean, like, when you look at what Adams, I mean, they're trying to rebuild the program, obviously. It's not going to be an easy thing to do, but the future looks bright over there at Adams. Um, and then I forgot to mention Troy Athens. I mean, like, the Troy Athens game, obviously, they're two losses, albeit to good teams, Utica Ford, no, Utica Eisenhower, and um, Troy Athens. I mean, like, those are two very good teams. I mean, like, and North Farm, those are two good teams for Troy Athens, you know what I mean? I mean, like, and they've had a tough week. So when you really look at the Raiders, um, right now, this is a team that is, they're trying to find a way, um, trying to, um, you know, and I think that's something that we got to keep an eye on with North Farmington is can the Raiders find that different identity? That is the big question for the Raiders going forward is can they find that I mean, that's a big question for the going forward. Can they find a different identity? That is going to be something to watch for um, as we head in the break. Obviously, when you look at the white right now, um, North Farm, I mean, Oxford right now still stands out. Then it's North Farm, Tinden, Royal Oak. Um, I would put Harper Woods right now over Seahome. Um, and actually, I, t I would put Troy Athens over um, Royal. I mean, I would put Troy Athens behind Royal Oak, then Seahome, then Harper Woods. Um, then it's, um, then it's Adams. Um, so really right now the division is going to come down to, I think it's three teams right now, Oxford, um, North Farmington and Royal Oak right now are your key factors right now. Um, in the division middle pack, I would say Troy Athens, um, Harper Woods, um, Seaholm, then Berkeley, um, then Adams. So that's my take right now on the white. Um, let's go to the blue now. I mean, the blue is pretty much starting to become clear and clear. Um, Adams really, I mean, when you look at Bloomfield Hills, the way they've been playing, um, they've been playing really good basketball lately. Um, I, Ferndale University and Ferndale, I just can't figure this out. You know what I mean? I can't figure neither team out right now. I really can't. Um... Avondale, they picked up some good two wins, um, beating Holly 39-36 and then knocked off Pontiac 54-6. Um, you know, so when you look at Avondale, I mean, and Pontiac has really been struggling. Oak Park's been struggling as well. Um, Farmington's been playing better when they get in the league play, but when they get out of league, I mean, they kind of struggle a little bit. Um, so when you really look at this division, Bloomfield Hills is clearly the top team in this division. I mean, they got proven players. Um, they've got, they've got, I mean, they built the program. I really like what Coach Kristen Massey's done. I mean, you know, when you look at, obviously, for them, their foundation really started in that fourth quarter of that Seahome game. I mean, that tells you something right there. Um, for Bloomfield Hills, the thing that I need, I want to see from them, is more improvement. I think that I think there's more room for them to grow as a team and as a program, and that's a good sign for them. I mean, it really is. Um, when you really look at it, um, I think the bottom line is um, in describing Bloomfield Hills, um, this is a team that I, they're going to be a scary team. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, yes, the record's going to be better. Then it looks, they're going to say it's their good team and all that. But people are going to say, you know, others are going to say, well, the jury's still out in Blue Bills. And that is true. The jury is also still out on this team. And I think, honestly, that's where it is with them. If the jury's still out with them, then they've got some, you know, then they got to start proving some doubters wrong. And do I think they can do it? Absolutely. I mean, you know, but the question for me is going to be is, can they do it? That is the big question. Um, Farmington, when you look at Farmington, obviously, um, I think with them, it's the consistency. Um, really, I, I think at the bottom line is going to be is I think that they're going to be fine. Um, we'll see what happens them going forward. 
Um, as I mentioned, Avondale, I think, is the third best team in the division. Um, I, and then it's followed by Oak Park, Ferndale University, Ferndale, and Pontiac. Um, just kind of figuring out that mess. Um, and it is a mess um, from about maybe four until seven in that division. That is a complete mess there in that division. So when you really look at it here, I've released the top 23 for girls basketball in my thoughts are on my blog at second away 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, I want to see where everybody stands. Um, obviously the top 10, it makes sense a little bit. You know, when you look at obviously the top teams right now, um, you know, I still, I still think West Bluefield's the top team. Yes. The schedule they played, but I don't know if I can trust them. Um, right now with the way that they're playing. Yes, I mean, they're struggling right now to defend. That's a big problem. Yes, I get that they get a lot of attention surrounding with the um, individual journalists, obviously. And then you look at um, the AU circuit, obviously, with the Michigan Storm. Um, yes, I get that the relationships, you know, with the AU system. But, you know, when you look at teams, you know what I mean? You know, I'm very concerned about West Bloomfield's lack of depth. That's a big concern for me. Looking at them, um, um, if Coach Darren McAllister can build that depth, um, then maybe I think that they can, um, then I think, you know, to go along with the Davis sisters, to go along with the Hendrick sisters, um, their starting five is solid. It comes down to the bench. I mean, like, the bench is the big concern I have with West Bloomfield. Um, that is a clear, obvious state right there. Um, because there's going to be times where you're going to have to rely on that bench. And it's hard for me to trust West Bloomfield when it comes to that bench. Um, it is really hard for me to trust them there. Um, Rochester, my second-ranked team right now. I think with them, um, obviously, Alice Max, they got to get Kylie Robinson going. That's the key for Coach Bill Thurston. Um, they got enough guard play. I'm very concerned about their guard play going forward, um, that they have just enough guard play to be successful. Um, Lake Orion's number three right now, I think, with the Dragons, obviously. You know, the injuries, Izzy Wachinski and Kylie Heck, those are two big um, injuries right there. Um, but the play of Maddie Ebert and Chloe Wiegers, they've been playing really well lately. Um, Ryan Palazak's had a really nice start um, for the Dragons. And I think when you look at the Dragons right now, they're fine. I'm not pressing the panic button or anything with them. They got enough depth. I think they're going to be just fine. Um, number four I got is Oxford. Um Yes, they're rolling right now. I mean, yes, they had that scare against North Branch, um, but they're clicking on all cylinders right now. And rounding out the top five right now is I've got is the um, is the North Farms Raiders. Um, when you look at the Raiders, yes, they're six and zero start. Um, really says something there. Um, I'm curious to see how North Farmington does. They do play another team in the red. Um, obviously, you look at the Raiders. Yes, they got a good chance at the white, but. They've got to get by, um, you know, but they're looking at a collision course with Farm Hills Mercy in the future. Um, and that's something to really, really look at for Coach Jeff Simpson um, with North Farmington. Um, like I said, the top five teams are, like I said, the top 23 are on my blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information there. Um, when you look at games this week, I, I just don't know if I see any games being played on, on Friday. I mean, especially with what's coming with the blizzard. Um, with the possible blizzard here. Um, and I think it's going to be, um, you know, I've been looking at forecast models and everything, um, and it, and it, it does not look very good um, Friday. Um, Thursday night and the Friday it just does not look good. I think Thursday night people are going to be fine, but Friday is the one I think, you know, Friday, you know, I, I just don't see any games being played on Friday. So we'll see what happens there. I don't see any girls or boys games being played on Friday. Um, that's how I'm seeing it because of this blizzard, um, this likely blizzard that's coming into the state. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I mean, it could rival that of 1978. It could rival that of the blizzard of 1971. And, you know, those years I wasn't even born yet. And I know the history of that. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's go to the boys. I mean, obviously when you look at the week that was, um, North Farmington coming in. Um, a blowout win against Hamtramck. Um, 
they were rolled. They rolled them 70, 39 ham tramic, very good team. Um, but what happened against Warren Lincoln at Northville on Saturday afternoon was Saturday night was mind boggling. I mean, you're up 34, 16 at halftime. I mean, you really are. You're rolling, you're clicking on all cylinders. Um, and then they, they give up. I mean, then they're in a street fight because they, they, they let their guard down. They really let their guard down and stop playing. And here comes Warren Lincoln, takes advantage, hits a winning three with no time left, beats North Farmington 56-55 in overtime. Um, just a difficult loss for Coach, Je- for Coach Jim Tondagoshin in the Raiders. Um, but it's also a good learning point for North Farmington as well. And I think here's the reason why. You can't take your foot off the gas. That's what happened. That's going to be the teaching point there. Is you, you've got to have a killer instinct every time you play. And that's the problem you look at with North Farmington is sometimes they think that they are, you know, they believe their own press clippings. You know what I mean? Obviously coming in, yes, they're the, one of the top teams in the state to start the year. Yes, they have, they have state championship dreams. But if you play like that in a game like that, you're not going to win a state title because you look at teams like, you know, you look at teams in your district that could give you problems, but I don't think there's a team in the district that could give them problems, but I think there's a team in the regionals that could give them problems. I think Troy definitely could, um, you know what the way they play. I mean, I love what coach Gary Frolic's team's been doing. Um, Otto Forno start Mason Parker's been playing outstanding basketball. Zach Pinoz has been solid. Darius Whiteside's been solid. Chase Kniper's been solid. Um, so when you look at Troy, I really like what they've been playing. Um, obviously West Bloomfield, very impressed with their four and start. Had to survive though, 42, 40 against Warren Fitzgerald on that Sunday. Um, but I'm going to give them a pass here because when you look at West Bloomfield, when you look at the Lakers, I think they're going to be okay. I, I think they're going to be a okay, um, with the way that they're playing. Um, you know, yes, they had some kids out with the flu, and the flu bug's been going around, obviously. Um, that's been a big story, obviously, with the flu um, going around with basketball teams, obviously. Um, and then you look at, um, and then you also look at Groves. Groves is 4-0 and right now. They're looking really good. Um, when you look at the Falcons, I mean, like, Mark, Coach Mark West has done a really nice job turning that program around. Um, been rolling as of late, and that's a good sign for them. I mean, those are some teams that, you know, right now are treading up right now, but I'm curious to see if, the, if both Groves and West Bloomfield, can they keep it up? I mean, that's the big question there when you look at them. Um, you know, I mean, like, I, I split off topic a little bit between the um, red and the white. Obviously, when you look at the red, um, when you look at the rest of the red, obviously, um, Ferndale's probably the best one and three team in the state with the way their schedule is. I mean, how do you explain the schedule? I mean, they have played almost Murder's Row, and they have been almost, and they've been in every single game of those. I mean, yes, they lost by 10 to Birmingham Brother Rice, but they've been really competitive in those games. I mean, they have been playing, I mean, yes, the ske- I mean, the schedule's been vicious. The schedule's been brutal. But you're playing some good teams. I mean, that's obviously what Coach Juan Rickman's been doing. You're playing some really good teams. And bottom line is, when you look at the um, Eagles, I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to be okay. Um, I think Adams right now is starting to get back on the right track. Yes, they had a tough week, obviously, against Troy and Lake Orion. Yes, they knocked off Lake Orion 57-29. Um, Lake Orion was really depleted. We're going to talk to them in a minute. Um, but when you look at um, Adams, obviously, Brady Priest going out with 20 points. Um We'll see what happens there in that game. I, I think, you know, in that one here, um, I think the Highlanders really, you know, yes, Brady P scored at 20 points. Um, Gordon G had 14 in that one. But against Troy, it was a heck of a game. I mean, like, you know, both those, in those games, it was tight. It was close. Um, but Adams only played two games. I mean, like, so when you really look at it here, they got a lot of games coming up. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure if the Friday games will be played, though, because of the snowstorm coming into the area. And like I met, like I said earlier, this could rival that of 1978, that blizzard. Um, 
But when you really look at um when you really look at Adams, um they're playing they're playing some good ball. I mean, they're playing some really good ball. Um Oak Park also has been rolling as well. I mean, they're off to a three and start. Just knocked off E course on Sunday, fifty seven forty. Uh, their sophomore Geo Hutchins has played really well. The Juan Holiday's been solid as well. Um Oak Park has been clicking on all cylinders right now. I, I really like where the Knights are at right now. Um, despite their their games where they've had some really close ones where they've had to survive. Um, so when you look at the Knights, I mean, like, really, um, just really some things that they've got to get down, and I think they can get that down real quick. Um, and then there's Clarkston. I mean, when you look at the Wolves, they've been playing the role of, Living by a thread. And the reason why I say this is because they've had to survive those two games against Lake Orion and Old Redford Academy. Um, they won over Lake Orion 38-35. Low scoring game defensively. Um, obviously, of course, Desmond Steppens had a big game. Um, and then you had, um, on the flip side, you had, you know, they had to survive 52-49 against Old Detroit Old Redford Academy where they almost blew that game. And it was almost a disaster in the making there. Um, but I think for Clarkson, the issue for them is they've got to be more consistent. And, you know, yes, defense, they don't have an identity right now. I mean, that's the problem I have with the Wolves is they've got to find an identity. What gets them there? I mean, yes, I mean, yes, you're trying to replace Keegan with Silk. That's a tough loss to have. But you really got to look at things here and say, well, Okay, um, Clarkson's a team that, you know, maybe they're not the same Clarkson team of old, and they're not. But, you know, they're still Clarkson. So, when you really look at the when you really look at the Wolves right now, um, they're just treading, but right now treading water right now. I mean, that's how I'm looking at with the Red right now. But Red, not a lot of changes right now with the standings and all that. Where I see everybody at right now, I still think Adams is a I mean, the biggest change probably would be Adams over Clarkson right now in the rankings. I mean, that's probably where I see it right now. Um, let's go to the white. Um, we talked West Bloomfield. We talked Rose's start. Um, what We've already talked Troy. Also, they're off to a... I mean, the combined record of Groves, Troy, and... Um, <laughs> of Groves, Troy, and, um, and um, West Bloomfield, I think they're combined, I think... I think eleven. I think twelve and zero right now, and that says something right there. That clearly says something right there that they're playing good basketball, and they're off to a torment start right now. Toward start. I mean, that's what's going on right now. I mean, they're off to a toward start. I mean, great start for all three programs. Really is. Um, Farmington. You know, they've been improving. They're getting better each game. Um. They're off. To, I mean, they had some tough losses early on, um, but Farmington right now, they're consistent. They're starting to get there. Um, they're starting to figure out who they are. Um, and that's a good sign from especially in the new year for Farmington. Um, and Coach um, Derek McConnell, uh, McDonald, I mean, like, I'm very curious to see what happens with them going forward. Um, but they're starting to roll right now. I mean, they had a 60-45 win against Rochester. Impressive win right now for them. Um, rolling and clicking on all cylinders. And then there's Lake Orion. I mean, when you look at the Dragons, you kind of look at the... They had a rough week. I mean, had a heartbreaking loss to um, Clarkston. Um, and then was virtually depleted against Adams where they fell 38... Where they fell 57-29. Um, I think when you look at that game against Adams, you kind of want to give them a pass here. Because, yes, Nate Havrilla... DJ Morrow and um, did not play in that game, and Kevin Tobe got hurt in that one. But when you look at Lake Orion, obviously the problem for them is going to be scoring. Um, who's going to be scoring? Who's that guard that can score? I mean, like DJ Morrow got hurt against Seaholm, um, didn't play in the Clarkson game. You know, I think you know. Does that make a difference? I, it does, in my opinion. I mean, like if he, you know, maybe he gives you at least 15, 20 points a night. You know, I mean, like, Ethan Sharkey had a really nice game against Clarkson. He had 13, he had 13 against them in that low-scoring game. I mean, you got to give, um, give him credit. But when you really look at the Dragons right now and you say to yourself, okay, um, 
where are you going to get scoring from? You know, you're inside solid. Obviously, you got Ke you got Blake Liddell in there. You got um, George, you got Caden DeGreffery. I need to see I need to see him start scoring. Um, and then also you have um player like Ryan Lush though, who's right now up um on varsity for Coach Jose Andrades. Um, you just got to get more production from your guards if you're Lake Orion. That's really where the issue I have with this team is you got to get more production from the guards. Um, I mean, like, but like I said, this team is not healthy right now. And yes, they got Holly this week. Um, that game could go either way at the trap game right there. Um, and then you have, then they have the break and then hopefully when they get back against Royal Oak, they'll be back to full strength and that'll be a good thing for this team. But you know, the question for me is going to be is where is the scoring going to come from? Especially from the guards. That's a big question because you know, teams are going to focus on Blake Liddell. Um, Liddell's been playing really good basketball. Um, but they've got to get more scoring, especially from the guards. Um, that's the big question for Coach Jose Andrade. Can he address that? That is the big question there for him and the Dragons right now. Um, not a lot of changes right now in the white, what I'm seeing right now. Um, maybe moving um, <coughs> maybe moving Lake Orion down to the, um, you know, down a little bit, I think would be something to watch, but we'll see what happens. Um, but right now, everybody in the white thought to a really good start. I mean, at least everybody in the white has at least two wins right now in that division. Um, let's go to the blue now. Um, the blue, when you really look at it here, um, Stony Creek's off to an 0-2 start. I mean, that's shocking to me. I, the, yes, the transition period, you know, you got to have a transition period that's got to happen during the season. So Stony Creek lost the top of New Buffalo Bay, lost the top of the Groves. Um, they're going to have to figure some things out if they want to turn things around quick. Um, but you know, when you look at Stony Creek, I mean, like they got the playmakers, they got Peyton Rumbler, you got, you got, um, you got Tavares there, you got Leo Kent, um, you know, they got the players. Now they just got to produce. That's really what it is with Stony Creek. Um, Rochester's off to an 0-2 start and that's a shocker for me. I mean, I didn't expect them to go 0-2. Uh, yes, they had a tough one against, um, Farmington the other night. Um, they still got to play Adams. That's going to be very difficult. Um, we'll see what Farmington has. I'm going to see what Rochester has. I mean, like, you know, they've got some concerns. I mean, you got Utica coming up. I mean, Utica's a trap game for them. Um, Ro I mean, and then there's Adams, obviously. I mean, like, but, and then they have that new Baltimore Anchor Bay tournament coming up. And that'll be really interesting to see where the Falcons lie right now. But there's some concerns with Rochester right now when you look at the boys situation right now. Um, Berkeley's coming off a tough loss to Avondale, 69-66. Um, playing much better since the disaster against Troy. Um, I think they're going to be fine. Um, I wouldn't press the panic button on the Bears or Coach George Thermal's team yet. Um, Seaholm's coming off a tough loss to Troy. Um, had a win against Wall Lake Western. Um, a good win for them there. Um, we'll see where they're at. Um, going forward with them. Um, and then you look at, um, and then obviously you got to look at, um, Oxford. Oxford picked up a good win against Lapierre, 43-40, behind 27 points from Lucas Bote. Could Bote be that, that Robin to, um, Jake Champagne's Batman? I mean, like, that is a big time question there. I mean, the Batman Robin um, scenario, obviously, Jake Champagne obviously has been playing. Um, you know, we, everybody knows about what he can do. Um, a lot of people look at, I, I thought originally it would have been Dom Cassisi that would have, would have been the, the playing the Robin role, but Lucas Botet has really been playing that role of the Robin for Coach D. Bladelaw's team. And, you know, they got to also get an inside presence as well. And I think, you know, one of the Katie boys have to really step up um, for Oxford. They want to really turn this thing around and make some noise um, going forward there. Um, when you look at, in Royal Oaks off to a 2-0 and start, um, they didn't play in a week, so... Obviously, Davis Arbiter, Clark Camden, and um, Dylan Hoffman, you know, they're going to be the three key players for Coach Aaron Smith going forward. Um, they should be undefeated heading into the break. Um, so I'm very curious to see what happens there with Royal Oak. Um, so when I look at the division right now, I still think Stony Creek and Rochester are the teams to beat. But Berkeley, um, but Berkeley, Oxford, 
Oh, and I forgot Troy Athens. Athens off to a nice start. I mean, they had a tough. They're they're around five hundred, playing around five hundred as well. Um, for Coach Dave Scott, um, had a nice win against Burnell U the other night. Um, coming off a blowout loss to um, Detroit University. I mean, like the old old Redford Academy. Um, so when I look at Troy Athens right now, I, I think they're going to be fine. I'm not going to press the panic button on them, but they got some things they got to address. So when I look at the division right now in the blue, I still think Stony Creek and Rochester are your two top teams. Um, Oxford could be a player. Berkeley could be a player. Um, Troy Athens could be a player. Um, Royal Oak right now is off to a nice start, but I'm very curious to see how they would do against the upper echelon of this division. Um, and then Seaholm right now, with the way they're struggling, obviously, there's some things they've got to address. Um going forward with them. Um, let's go now from the blue to the gold. Um, when you look at the gold, um, I think the team to really watch for in this division has been Harper Woods. Um, Harper Woods has been playing really good basketball. And I think for Coach Tawan Porter, um, you know, you're winning tight games, you're winning close games. It's a great sign going forward. Um, really like the direction that, um, that the pioneers have been going with, obviously. Um, I just think with Harper Woods, the way that they're playing, um, you know, I think they could be the team in this division to watch for. I mean, the way that they're playing, I mean, like, you know, battle-tested, very competitive, close games. Um, just really the bottom line is the Pioneers have been playing just good basketball, outstanding basketball. Now, a team that really hasn't been playing good basketball in this division has been Southfield. And when you really look at the Warriors, they've lost three straight. I mean, they lost. I know they were crushed by West Bloomfield by 30, 64, 34. They've scored 34 points before their game, um, before their last game against them um, out in Northville, where they end up losing that one. Um, again, I think they played Northville and they lost that one. Um, but when I look at the Warriors, they've got to start scoring. I mean, that's really where their their issue is. I mean, they're 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 not scoring, and that's why their defense has been suffering. Um, it's clear to me when you look at coach Terrence Porter that the date got to address their defensive issues, no, their offensive issues. And I think, you know, they've got to spend at least more time on the offensive side of the floor, getting some points up. You know what I mean? That's the key where I have with a and where their issues are right now is, Oh, it's been on the offensive side of the basketball. So when I look at a and obviously you have to address your offense. That's the big issue I have with them. If they don't, it, they're going to be in some trouble. I mean, they really are going to be in some trouble. Um, and then let's look at Avondale. Avondale's been a team that's been um, hot and cold lately. Um, had a big win against Berkeley the other night. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the 69-66 game. Um, they're getting contributions everywhere. Coach Pat Clancy's really liked this team, despite the record. Um, I really think that the Yellow Jackets, can, if they're consistent, I think they can be very good. Um, I think no doubt they can be very good. So we'll see what happens there. Um, in that for in that one for Avondale going forward there. Um, I know they got that Carlton Airport showcase coming up, so that'd be really interesting to watch for um going forward there. And then you have um and then you have Ferndale University. Obviously with them, I didn't have an updated score from their game against Marine City. They played the later night at Little Caesars Arena. After the um, conclusion of Pistons versus Nets game, um, where the Pistons ended up losing that one to the Nets, um, 124-121. I remember that one. Of course, they had the teal court there. Um, and, you know, when we look at the Eagles, um, they've been really inconsistent. I mean, obviously off to a good start to start the year. I thought, okay, maybe this could be the year that they turned things around. Then they had two really tough losses. Um, yeah, they played Troy Athens. They played them tough. But for the Eagles, yes, it's there, but it's just putting it together. And I think that's the thing that Coach um, Josh Nix has got to really do with the Eagles is, you know, yes, Marine City came in really struggling, so I don't know if they won that game or not. Um, I will. I haven't updated the top 23 or my thoughts yet. Of course, I haven't put it up yet. But still, I mean, like, you know, with the Eagles right now, I still think they're more advanced than they are right now with the way that they're playing right now. Um so we'll see what happens um, with Ferndale University. I'm very curious to see what happens with them. 
going forward with the Eagles there. Um, really, really curious to see how things are with them, but we'll see. And then there's Pontiac. Um, Pontiac, you know, I don't know what I'm going to get with them. I mean, there's one week where one game they look really good, and then there's one game they don't look very good. I mean, you know, they've been really inconsistent. I mean, like, they played Jackson, lost by 14 in that one. They, I know they played Dearborn Heights Robichaud the other night over at E-Course. Um, don't know, they haven't posted their scores yet. Um, and I think that's something that you got to look at with Pontiac is can they, can you trust them to be consistent? That is the big question I have for Coach Damon O'Neill's team is can they be consistent, especially hanging in the new year? I mean, that's the thing you got to really look at is consistency. I mean, usually consistency has always been the hallmark of greatness. It's always been, you know, if you're a consistent team, you're going to be fine. If you're not, you're in trouble. I mean, that's really what it is right now when you describe Pontiac is consistency, consistency, consistency. That's really how it is with them. So we'll see with Pontiac. I mean, obviously, there's some things that they got to address, obviously, going forward. Um, when I look at my top 23 right now, um, North Farmington's still my number one team despite their low. I mean, like, let's go to the gold first a little bit here. I mean, like, um, the standings a little bit. I have Harper Woods right now over Ferndale U. Um, and I have Harper Woods right now, then it's Safi Darson Tech, then Avondale, Ferndale U, and then um, Pontiac. That's my early standings right now in the um, gold division. My top 10, um, obviously the top team is um, is North Farmington, even though they lost to um, Warren Lincoln. Um, my number two has to be, um, my number two team right now would have to be, um, I think Troy's my number two team right now, the way that they're playing. I really like how they're, how they've been playing good basketball. Um, my number three team has to be Ferndale. Um, yes, they're, I think Ferndale's the best one in three team in the state. Um, but when I look at the Eagles right now, I mean, like, you know, yes, they're playing a tough schedule and they're playing a, um, they're playing some good basketball despite the losses, despite the one in three record. Um, but I really like where this team's at right now, despite everything that's been going on with them. Um, with them, and I think that's something to really, really look at with them. Um, number four I have is Oak Park. Oak Park's been treading water a little bit. Um, I really think the Knights are a team that's got a lot of um, potential. Yes, they had that winning against E-Course. It's a big deal. Um, I think that the Knights, if they can turn things around, um, you know, yes, they're 3-0. and I mean, there's a lot to like with them. Um, but we'll see with the Knights. I mean, like, I'm very curious to see what happens with the Knights, um, going forward there with them. Um, and then my number five team, I'm going to give it to West Bloomfield because when I look at the Lakers, um, the Lakers have been off to a good start. They've been battle tested. They were tested against Warren Fitzgerald on Sunday night, winning at one at Macomb Community College. Um, I think that the Eagles, I think that the Lakers right now, Yes, people are going to say, what about Groves? Obviously, they're off to a good start. Yes, they are. Um, but West Bloomfield has been really, you know, you look at what Coach Renard Jordan had um, last year. I mean, there were some struggles there. I think going down the white will help this team. Um, and then people are going to say, well, I forgot to mention Bloomfield Hills in the white. I mean, yes, they're off to a good start, but they really haven't played the schedule that, you know, Bloomfield Hills has, you know, they haven't really played the schedule. Obviously, you know, Adam Trish getting his 1,000 career point. Um, but I just don't trust Bloomfield Hills right now with the schedule coming up. Yes, they're going to need Adam Trish to do more. Um, so I forgot to mention that on the earlier part of the podcast is Bloomfield Hills. Um, but when I look at the Blackhawks right now, yes, they're good. I mean, yeah, yes, no, Adam Trish has been playing well, but the schedule really hasn't been that impressive for me. And I, and it's hard for me to trust Bloomfield Hills with the schedule that they have right now. Um, going forward there with Bloomfield Hills. Um, so now let's, I'm going to talk a little bit here about, of course, obviously we're getting closer to the end of the podcast and also the Christmas holiday coming up. Um, I don't be surprised. And I mentioned this earlier that it wouldn't surprise me that there will be a lot of cancellation on Friday, um, because of the impending snowstorm. And, you know, I've been looking at forecast models and all that. And, you know, when you look at models and all that, it's just, Sometimes they're consistent, sometimes they're not. But to me, 
this looks like a snowstorm that could rival that of 1978, the blizzard that came through here. Now, I wasn't alive in 1978 or the blizzard of 1971. Like I said, I, I also wasn't alive back then. Um, but I remember, I remember this. I remember the disruptions for a couple days. Um, wind component to all this, you know, and the blizzard component. I, I mean, I do remember the blizzard of 1999. Um, in that one, I remember that one really well. Um, and it was a really, really vicious storm. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see some games being postponed, maybe even moved back. Um, you know, and there's also going to be people going out for a Christmas holiday, you know, going out of town. Um, my advice to them is please stay safe on the roads um, because it's going to be because it looks like it's going to be a mess. It's going to be a nightmare travel-wise. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, but it looks like Thursday night, late Thursday night, and all day Friday. Um, I'm not sure if the games will be, if we can get games in on Thursday. I mean, like, I, who knows? But, you know, but I definitely would say Friday would be a no-go for a lot of, um, I know there's some classics going on. Um, and I know Christmas Eve coming up this weekend, um, Christmas day on Sunday. Um, so, and then we have like the week of, you know, with the classics, obviously mostly round ball coming up, um, over at Ferndale for the boys and them Westfield prep for the girls. Um, and we're going to preview that also be on the blog at selling by 4650 at com. Um, several OA teams are playing in the motor city round ball classic and also other classics like the Detroit Cast Tech Classic, North Farms have their own showcase for boys basketball. Um, several OA teams are in there. Um, and also we have the Carlton Airport Showcase. Avenue's in that. Um, the new Baltimore Anchor Bay Tournament, um, which Rochester's in that. Um, so a lot of basketball to go around this Christmas day, um, around Christmas um, time, heading into New Year's. So a lot to look at as we head forward into the... Um, as we had as we had forward in the Christmas day. Before I sign it out here, I want to make sure everybody want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Make sure everybody's safe. Um stay safe on the roads. Um especially what's coming up. Um uh, coming up obviously with the snowstorm. Uh, I advise all OA Nation to stay safe. Make sure make sure everybody stays healthy, you know, and we'll see what happens from going forward. All right, everybody wanna sign off here. Um make sure you follow blog at second bay forty six fifty at blogspot.com. Um take care. God bless. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Um, and happy Kwanzaa to everybody. God bless. And I will see you all next week. God bless. And see you next week.